Our first topic is how scriptwriters find their story. So, uh, Gary, do you want to tell us how you typically uh, find your story? Yeah, um, typically, uh, typically is an interesting word. Um, typically, uh, I mean, my short film that I made, uh, Dog in the Palace, um, I dreamt that entirely in split screen. And I woke up and thought, wow, I want to do that. And, um, and that's what I did. So, yeah, so a few stories I've had um, as dreams. I've had um, a dream that was definitely a novel, and I haven't actually done, done anything with that yet, but that was kind of interesting because I, I, when I was dreaming it, I could feel myself thinking this is definitely a novel, you know, it's not a film, that's kind of weird. Um, but that was like a really interesting dream, actually. And um, a lot of the time it's, it's just about asking what if, I think. Mm. What if this happened and what if that happened? What if this happened and nothing happened, you know, and then... Um, so stuff like that. I was in uh, Edinburgh. We went to the Edinburgh Festival this year, and um, I was just sitting in a bench, and I was wondering, just if I saw a couple propose, and some homeless guy was sitting on the bench and watching it, and she invited him to the wedding, and how would that play out? And that was kind of just from sitting in a park, you know. Um, I kind of maybe thought of myself as a homeless guy. I don't know why. Um, but that was a bit weird. Um, but yeah, but then I kind of think about that for a minute and think, is that different enough from my love you man or something? Has it been done before? What can I do differently? And generally, if it stays in my head, then I kind of want to think more about it and start writing, you know, the actual outline. Okay. Mm. Uh, Stefan, how do you... Uh, what if is, is pretty much the same kind of idea. I mean, I, I don't have uh, a Gary's lucid dreaming uh, benefit, uh, but what if is, is, is generally how I look at the world. I mean... It's generally been said that very often I, I, I end up regarding, regardless of whether it's a different genre or a different theme, at the end of the day, there's always what I end up writing is a, a, a what if. What if the world is not quite as we appear? Um, things where we might walk through the world and go, oh, well, that's a bit odd, and then never think of it again. The question is, why is it a bit odd? What if there was something darker behind it? What if there was something weirder behind it? The idea of, is there something weirder behind it is, is you know, always awesome. Mm. Um, because... You know, the, sometimes the, the amount of times people have said, oh, you couldn't make that up. Actually, I disagree with that entirely. Um, truth is not always stranger than fiction. There's always something a little stranger. There's always something that could be different. Um, the person who looks a little odd, what if there's a reason for it? The, per the thing that's out of place, the, the, the deja vu feeling, um, mm. as, as was used a, a, in The Matrix as, a, yeah. as, as an idea as well. The idea of that something could always be slightly different. There's something beneath the thin veneer of what we call reality, that, uh, that comfort blanket that we love to wrap ourselves in to rest ourselves assured that the world is not quite so terrifying. I quite like the idea that the world could be quite so terrifying. Even regardless, even if it's not a supernatural or a weirdness thing, you know, the, the, the person that you think is, is looking at you funny uh, as you're walking down the street um, could be because of a, um, a, a problem with, he, does, he, he thinks you're potentially, he's a hitman and he's confused you with his, with his next target. Anything could come out of everything. It's a matter of really just walking through the world with open eyes. You find things trigger other things as well. Like yeah. you see something and then that triggers, oh, hang on, how did that happen? Why did that happen? And then things start linking together. Yeah. You know, you, uh, most, most storytellers, and regardless of what medium, uh, tend to you know, read and or watch uh, uh, voraciously. So you start linking things through. Well, there was this article I read about homelessness. Yeah. There was this story, that this anecdote that someone once told me. There was this absolutely vile person I overheard on a bus. Suddenly you're linking things through and you start to realise there's a flow here. Yeah. Um, and you know, Things get rejected, things get put in, things get slightly adapted. Um, yeah. You know, no, no anecdote can yeah. be improved. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. At yeah. some point, it kind of comes down to who is this person watching this or who is this yes. person seeing it. And mm -hmm. then I think that's where I kind of stop with a story and I think about who this character might be, who's kind of, mm -hmm. who's the main character in this story, I think. Yeah. Um, what, what's their goal? What are they trying to, what are they trying to achieve yeah. out of this? Yeah. What, what do you generally do when you've come up with that sort of brain flash sort of moment? Um... Do you, uh, do you always have some note cards with you or, um, or do you jot it down on your phone? So yeah, what do you generally do to try and, you know, do obviously make sure you remember the story and then obviously start expanding essentially? Yes, both. Um, almost always have index cards, pens, notepad of some kind with me. 
Um, the times when you don't, well, you know, anybody who knows me knows I'm pretty much never more than about a millimeter away from my phone at any one time. Um, and that's where a lot of ideas just go in, just sticking it into, into a draft, just an idea, store it away, stick it into uh, Dropbox or Evernote, and then sometime later come back to it and sift through and go, oh, okay, ah, all right, okay. Um, and sometimes it's through searches, you know, you, you, you store loads of text files or put things into Evernote and you just go, oh, I wonder just on this, this idea, stick the word in and suddenly all these thoughts pop up that you've had over the last period of time. Yeah. And you start going, okay, these are the pieces, these, these can fit, this doesn't, this, this does. Um, but yeah, I mean, almost everybody has something to take notes with them at all times, yeah. even if it's just a phone. But a phone is really easy, especially if it's just a quick thought. You know, you overhear a snippet of conversation. Yeah. The amount of times where an idea has gelled from hearing some, or mishearing, even better, yeah. someone yeah. else's conversation, um, where you think, actually, you know, that little anecdote, if it was just a little bit different, that would be a really yeah. good story. Um, even characters. Yeah. Uh, Gary, what, what do you uh, usually do? Yeah, I mean, I... I been living dangerously i guess i don't always write things down if i think of them but i think that's also i know well, that's also a tactic to see how interested i am in it i like to think that i would remember it if i was really interested and then maybe I, then i think yeah i definitely want to write this down so it's almost like you know what do i think of this idea mm. it's like subconsciously i guess that's my filter of different ideas yeah but um yeah i definitely i i'm writing things on my phone uh, what I get then is a lot of different documents, which is always kind of confusing, and you have to name them like Ideas 1 or Ideas 300 <laughs> or whatever. So, yeah, so that's kind of a bit... Um, yeah, managing all of that um, is kind of awkward. But, yeah, I generally will write something on my phone if I really, really like it. If I've thought about it for a couple of days, then, hmm. then yeah, I'll write it yeah. down. And the, these days, of course, all the different apps and things all sync yeah. with each other, so you yeah. can have things back at home, yeah. either by Dropbox, Evernote. That's, Evernote yeah. is really good for that. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I've got Evernote on my phone. Yeah, iPad, you sent me laptop, that. You, but, yeah. Well, no. Can you have it on laptop? But yes, yeah, you can. Yes, you can. Yeah, yeah. It's the web, yeah. Well, yeah. you've shared uh, photos with me on Evernote and stuff like that, and ideas and things. So yeah, it's really useful. Which yeah. can also then be useful for collaborating. If you're yeah. co-writing a script, you can have a shared folder. Different ideas come together. Um, but yeah, in in effect, yeah, everybody will always have something. Yeah. Yeah. I think what you were saying about um, even though if you don't um, jot down for idea, that can be a test of whether it's a good idea. Yeah. And that's also going to be my next question is like, how do you judge whether an idea is worth pursuing, basically? Um, I Yeah, I suppose it's um, even when I do write them down, I think things get further down that list of things that I kind of want to work on next. Like, I mean, I'm writing three scripts at the moment which is kind of probably the, the definition of madness when you're writing too many projects at the same time. Um, but yeah, so so like one of them is um, cause someone is kind of waiting for it, so that's kind of trying to be my first one, but then I've got two mentors, so now it's kind of somebody's, somebody's waiting for each of them, so that's kind of awkward, but at the same time it does give me that deadline to say this is what I need to do on this treatment and, and by this date I need to send it to someone. So that's kind of really useful. Um, and with that, I've, I've kind of chosen the projects that I really uh, have been working on for a while uh, because I really want them to, you know, be be in the best position they can be. Um, and then, yeah, with newer, newer ideas, they just kind of go, go I guess, further down the list or up the list. I've written a two pages of, of a kind of TV idea that I had because I really liked that one. And that was quite a kind of personal story. So I knew, you know, I wanted something that I could write was that was kind of honest. It was about me, but not autobiographical you know in a way um so yeah so that was kind of interesting so that one I wrote kind of a two pages out um and I think that's the one I kind of want to start thinking about next um but yeah that's yeah it's about running down and then looking at them uh, a month or so after and saying you know do I still like that idea uh, Stefan? Well, I often don't have initially fully formed ideas, it's, it's little snippets, so it's very much like a kind of alchemy where you, you, you're gaining ingredients over time and at some point something just catalyzes and when the imagination won't let it go, when it literally just has to come out, then that's the one. Um, and it could be you know, anything that triggers it, anything that brings those last elements together. Um, and so at that point you've just whether you then turn it into a treatment or an outline or you just sit in, sit in front of fade in or final draft and start hammering it out and then coming back out and going back and doing the outline. Well, thanks very much for all your input.
Now let's uh, move on to the next section. <laughs>